Hey. So guys, I am here in Manzanita, and unfortunately, I've had my camera in time lapse without knowing it uh, ever since we left the RV resort, the Sea Ranch RV resort. So all the footage that we have right now is on the 360 camera and on Rex's phone camera. So we're going to show that to you, what we have of those days. But unfortunately, my main camera, I've been recording everything uh, in time lapse, and I've just now fixed it. Yesterday we had to make low tide so we could cross Humbug Point and now we have to cross Huck Point. So we had to wake up super early because low tide is at 6 a.m. Highway 101 up there. Luckily, we can go underneath it. It's a Oregon Coast Trail Blaze. So it looks like we're at somebody's backyard, but this is the trail, and here's a little creek on Arch Cape. No, a little bridge on Arch Cape Creek. Well, here's a small bridge. I think it's probably even one at a time. This is and my daughter's safe. So we've decided to take a zero day in Manzanita. It was one of our scheduled zero days. And we're staying here at the Sand Dune Inn. It's a really nice little hotel. The lady who runs the place, her name is Angela. She's a real sweetheart. And she's been very, very kind to us and very accommodating to the fact that we're hiking the trail. So if you're hiking the trail and you get an opportunity, stop on by and see her. Oh, so unfortunately, that's all we have. I had some great shots that I thought I took from the top of Cape Falcon. Um, however, we did not get to go up uh, Nia Kahani Mountain or Nia Kahani Mountain. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. The trail was actually closed. It said hazardous conditions and there was a sign across there and the whole trail was closed. So we had to do extra road walking on 101, which was not my favorite thing to do. Uh, and then eventually we walked into the town here of Manzanita and uh, last night we stayed in uh, the, uh, was it Nahelm Bay? Nahelm Bay uh, State Park Hiker Biker Camp and no sooner did we get our stuff set up that we got rained on real heavily and pretty much had to hunker down in the tent for the rest of the night. So that pretty much catches up to speed. I will try to keep my camera out of time-lapse mode and get you guys better footage. 
Well, we're just getting packed up out of the sand dune in. Uh, we're taking off today. The goal is a 13.1 to Garibaldi. First thing we have to do is get down to where the Jetty Fishery Service is going to pick us up. So Juniper can ride her first ferry. Well, I have no idea if it's going to last, but the sun is shining for once. We're not getting rain on. We're dry. Yeah, she's excited too. We're dry, we're clean, and then we're headed down south towards Rockaway Beach. Next stop for us is Garibaldi. Well, we've come to the mouth of Nahillam Bay, and this is going to be our first ferry crossing, so we have to find the place where we're supposed to be picked up somewhere around here. And look, there are some horses on the beach. So the Jetty Fishery is the one that offers the hiker service, the ferries for hikers across the Helen Bay. It's $10 per person. So for us, we don't know if the baby's gonna count or not, it's gonna be 20 or 30 bucks. Bonnie's guide actually says to call them 48 hours in advance. And we did that. And instead of making an appointment with us, they actually just told us to call when we got to the shore at the mouth of the Helen Bay and uh, that it would take them three to five minutes to come get us. So we didn't actually have to make an appointment. Now, that may not be the case once you get into the heart of the hiker season. We're here just a little bit early. We started on the 22nd of May, and I think that uh, June is really the time that a lot of the hikers start this trail. So you should probably go ahead and heed uh, Bonnie's advice in her book and call and find out just how busy they are. They might have other ferries booked and I think that they do fishing charters as well during the peak season. But in our case, we lucked out and all we have to do is find the pickup spot and then give them a call. Well, we have found our way to the water. Now we just gotta find our way down to the beach. Well, a big thank you to all the folks over here at Jetty Fishery for being kind enough to take us across the water. I think we have approximately 10 more miles to go today to get to uh, Garibaldi and the uh, Old River Mill uh, RV Park. That's where we're staying tonight. Well, the fishery here actually has uh, food that you can buy. We just have some really, really good steamed clams and uh, Rex had ourselves a stout beer. That's gonna count as our lunch break for the day. So now it's time to hike on. I think we have 10 more miles. Now it's down the railroad tracks a little bit and onto the beach so we can hit Garibaldi. So everybody unanimously has told us that the safest trip for us on foot is gonna to be to walk these railroad tracks. Evidently there's only one tourist train that runs down this tracks. It's a steam engine, it's really slow. There's enough room on both sides of the tracks to walk this. And this will allow us to avoid walking with the baby on the 101. So if you are hiking in the trail and you've just come out at Jetty Fishery, apparently the safest way to head toward Garibaldi is to walk the railroad tracks down to the beach. So, uh, we are just about 60 miles in, at least we will be at the end of this day, and my shoes have already developed holes on both sides. Now granted, day before yesterday we did some really hard hiking through some rocky, muddy, difficult terrain. But 
Typically, I expect a pair of shoes to last longer than this before they start getting holes. I'm not sure that that's going to make me through the, uh, the entire trail. So I might have to get myself a pair of backup shoes sent from home. <laughs> well, with so much of this trail being choose your own adventure, it's always nice to see that Oregon Coast Trail blaze to know you're going the right direction. Woohoo, and we're back to the beach. Well, we're back on the train tracks at Rockaway Beach. We came back up on the tracks. As we looked down the map, we realized if we followed the beach, we were gonna have to connect back up in the 101 and walk down 101. But the train tracks will actually go all the way down into Garibaldi and right to the RV resort we're camping at today. And that will help keep us safe and keep us off the road with very little shoulder. Uh, especially carrying an infant, as we keep saying, we put a lot of emphasis on wanting to make sure that we have safety measures in place, probably more so than we would without carrying the baby. I'm definitely prone to taking a few more risks when I'm hiking by myself, but not so much when I'm hiking with my daughter. The train track hiking is a little bit slower than walking on the beach. However, the view is pretty good right now. We uh, are walking on the train track that's actually going directly through this lake. It's pretty gorgeous. Over there you can see the 101, which is exactly what it is we're trying to avoid up ahead. The sun is shining. It's been our first good day. It's probably 70 degrees outside right now, which is not what it was the last couple of days. So it's nice to have some sun. Uh, we're going to be able to dry out our tent tonight, so that's pretty exciting. All in all, it's been a pretty great day. Ah. Well guys, it was about 13 and a half miles in today. The rail walking was a little bit tedious, but it was a lot safer. Uh, there were some fantastic views today. All in all, this was a pretty good day. The weather was great, and we are here at the Old Mill RV Park. We just got our tent side, uh, set up here. It's the first time it's been set up in dry conditions. As you can see there, the rain is evaporating off of it. We're finally going to have a dry tent. Right over here, they've got a stand that's selling cherries, so I think we're going to go check that out, and then it's off to go find some dinner. Well, good morning, everybody. we got a pretty easy day today. It's 8.15. We were able to sleep in. Today we're going to avoid the gap in the trail that involves road rocking the 101 by taking a bus. We're going to go do a tour at the... Uh, Tillamook Creamery, get some ice cream today, and then we're headed off to Tillamook itself so we can check into the Western Royal Hotel. Well, that's pretty cool. That is an actual steam engine. Well, that one at the restaurant, you know, so busy. I got no time. Well, we just got off the number three bus here in Tillamook at the Fred Meyer, stopped to pick up a fuel canister that we needed for our cook stove, and now we've come over to take a tour of the Tillamook Creamery. <laughs> nom 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 nom. Yeah. Is that good? Well guys, we've arrived at the Western Royal Inn here in Tillamook. This is where we're going to be staying for the night. We were checking out our schedule for tomorrow and seeing what it is that we were uh, needing to do in order to get back on trail. And the plan was to go back to uh, Garibaldi on a bus and then have the Garibaldi Marina ferry us across so we can pick up the trail right where we left off. Unfortunately, we ran into a bit of a snag and are not going to be able to do that. 
uh, we called them to arrange the ferry and uh, it looked like things were all ready to go until we mentioned that we had a nine month old daughter with us and they said that nobody under the age of five was allowed on their boats. So the options that are left to us are either one, walk the 101, uh, I think 16 miles into Neetarts, which we're not going to do. That's something I might do if I was hiking on my own. Uh, but as I've mentioned multiple times, I'm not going to do that with my daughter. And the second option after that is to take a bus directly from Tillamook into Neeharts. The problem and the bummer is that it's going to make us miss Cape Mere, which we're looking forward to hiking over. But unfortunately, because we decided to hike with an infant, we're going to have to make some compromises on this trip. So that's a section that I'm going to have to come back and do later when I have the opportunity, because as a family, we're not going to be able to do it.